Namaskar, I'm Harpreet Kaur and I welcome you all to our live and interactive session. You are watching us on our PME Vidya channel number 10 and this is PME Vidya class 10. Today we are taking up this session for the students of class 10. The subject that we have taken up is a social science and economics to be precise and we are going to learn about chapter number 2 of your textbook titled Sectors of the Economy. This session is live and interactive which means you can always interact with the expert and you can get your doubts cleared. So, we will tell you that this time, because you are watching e-vidya channel number 10, and now in a few hours, this session will be uploaded on our YouTube channel NCERT official. And there you can watch the repeat uh, you know, webcast of this session as well. For this time, you can note that our phone number which is double eight double zero double four zero double five nine. कोई भी question है, do reach out to us. और अगर आप कोई email लिखना चाहते हैं with your questions, suggestions and feedback, तो आप हमें लिख सकते हैं dth dot class ten at ciet dot nic dot n पर. साथ ही साथ हम आपको ये बताना चाहेंगे कि session live and interactive है और expert हमारे साथ मौजूद हैं. Yes, we are joined by Mr. Pali Arora. Ma'am, namaskar and welcome to the session. Namaskar. So, ma'am is PGT Economics from Sanskriti School, New Delhi and ma'am will be sharing some important details regarding the topic with us today in the session. So, now it's time for me to move ahead in the session and ma'am, I will request you to kindly share a brief overview of what exactly we are going to learn today and what will be the learning outcome. Thank you so much. Hello viewers. Uh, so today we will be learning about a lot of uh, interesting things about our economy and uh, as a student of grade 10, this is a very uh, interesting topic for us to understand how the economy works. It also tells us how different kinds of uh, sectors are existing in our economy, why we have this kind of classification in our economy and the beauty of this concept is that since we are living in our country and we uh, maybe ourselves or our family members or when we look around and observe and see so many people are working and they are contributing towards the economy so it's out of curiosity one would like to know what all different kinds of occupations are existing in our economy and how these sectors are contributing towards the GDP. So, this is another thing that we will talk about in today's uh, session. Uh, in fact, what is GDP and how actually we count the overall production in our economy and see how these sectors are contributing towards the GDP. Mm, absolutely and uh, you mentioned activities, economic activities. So, let us try to understand what do we mean by economic activities? Absolutely. So, let us understand that uh, when we are either a consumer or a producer or in any role in the economy, we have to understand that any work that we do has an income generation ultimately. Otherwise, work is very unpleasant. Nobody would like to work unless we have some kind of a reward yes. behind it. <laughs> So, based on that we know that uh, economic activities are actions that involve the production, distribution and consumption of goods and services. So, I will give you one example to understand these economic activities. Suppose I uh, go to home today and would wish to cook in the kitchen then the kind of uh, lavish spread that I might cook for dinner today <laughs> would be uh, an economic activity or not. It's like out of my love and affection mm. for my family, my children that I am cooking in a particular day. So, any work that we do is not an economic activity. Economic activity would be that of a chef if I hire and who is called every day in my house to cook for me as well and my family then that chef would be contributing towards the economy and would be involved in an economic activity. So, we have to understand that any activity that is for income generation ultimately and there is a reward attached to it, that would be called an economic activity. And that reward can be monetary and non-monetary or strictly monetary? Yes, that reward has to be monetary and to be added in the country's GDP which we will learn more about in the coming slides. Right. So, now that we have understood what economic activity means, now let us try to look at different kind of uh, sectors that we are having in our economy yes. that uh, what kind of sectors exist and uh, in what things they are dealing. 
Absolutely. So let's understand the different kinds of sectors that are existing in our economy and observe more closely with examples how different professions are existing in our economy. As you can see on the screen, there are three sectors of the economy, primary sector, secondary sector and tertiary sector. Let's start with primary sector. Now we all know that there are certain kind of occupations where the input itself is a natural resource. So say for example, there is a farmer who is, uh, you know, growing a crop and for that the natural resource which is there, which is in terms of land, which is in terms of water or which is in terms of the uh, entire raw materials which are there in order to grow the crop. All these are natural resources that would help develop a commodity which is called a natural good. So in the end what has been produced is say cotton. So that is also a natural good which is being produced with the help of natural resources. So if we are talking about animal husbandry wherein there is production of milk again from any kind of animal rearing then that is also belonging to the primary sector. So primary sector is not just farming, it can also be other allied activities which are associated with farming. So primary sector is something which is associated with natural resources. However, if we move ahead and see secondary sector on the slide, we will understand that once a particular natural good is produced through the primary sector, we need to understand there is a next step. Now these kinds of natural resources which when converted into natural goods now needs a certain level of processing. We need to now manufacture different kinds of finished products out of those natural goods. And that is where the role of the secondary sector comes in. So there is an assembly line that you can see on the screen wherein your raw materials would be converted into finished products. And how beautifully we can see that these two sectors are actually based on each other's help. And when we move on to the third sector which is actually the backbone of the entire economy which is tertiary sector, that is something which is essential for running both primary as well as the secondary sector. In tertiary sector, you will find all the supporting services like banking, insurance, you will find those kinds of services which is basic for warehousing, for transporting, for marketing the entire end product and with the help of which your product would reach the end consumer. So that is essential for us to know that once the raw materials are produced and that is getting processed and manufactured in the secondary sector, we need a supporting service that will help reach this product go to the end consumer. So how beautifully we see that sectors of the economy are so much interrelated. Absolutely and we very nicely understood you know different sectors of the economy along with examples and we see that service sector or tertiary sector in India is booming at the moment. You see all these BPOs, KPOs, customer service support, insurance, medical, you name it and we have it. You know India is one of the uh, largest uh, economies in the world and we have so much of manpower that we are contributing significantly to our service sector. But you know as ma'am just mentioned that last line that these sectors are interdependent on each other. What I gather from this is that they can't function independently there has to be some interchange or exchange of support so ma'am kindly throw some light on that yes so let's understand how these three sectors of the economy are interdependent so let's start with one very basic flowchart that i have drawn for you on the slide here it says primary sector since it is producing the natural goods that would be the supplier of raw material to the secondary as well as the tertiary sector and the secondary sector would then process and manufacture these uh, natural goods and convert them into a finished product. And of course, tertiary sector is there to provide several kinds of supporting services in terms of banking, transportation, etc. But see, if even one sector is missing in the economy, the other two sectors cannot work. Interdependence would mean that if there are no raw materials, how will the industries work? What will they manufacture? And if there is no transportation, who will transport the basic natural goods to the factories where the goods are processed? 
and who will then reach their all these kinds of products to the end consumer. So, if we see the interdependence through this chart, we understand that even if one sector gets missing in the entire process, the economy will stop working. Right. So, you know, that is why we say that uh, you depend on another to get the work done or to get the things moving. But again, when we talk about uh, things here, we talk about things in terms of goods and services that are there because we've already understood the sectors and kind of economic activities and the resultant that is there. Now, ma'am, tell me how do we count these various goods and services that are there in the country and uh, how do we know that what exactly each sector is producing in total? Absolutely. So, we have beautifully understood that there are sectors who are producing different kinds of goods but somewhere down the line the production will be counted for. So, for that we need to understand a very basic concept of GDP. I think all the students would be very much familiar with this acronym GDP and they would easily guess what GDP stands for. It is gross domestic product. Now, how do we actually count for the production of goods and services which are being produced in the primary, secondary and the tertiary sector? For that, let us see the definition of GDP. GDP is nothing but the value of final goods and services which are produced in each sector during a particular year and that provides the total production of the sector for that year during you, a one year of time period and that too within the domestic territory of the economy. We have to understand that the production that we are talking about is that of final goods and services. Now, this is something that uh, would create curiosity in your mind and I am sure Harpreet would also understand that why do we actually count only the final goods Absolutely. and services? Because every time I am just hearing this word final goods and services and not the intermediate goods, not the primary goods, why just final goods? Yeah, so that is again something that everyone should be curious about and learn the difference between a final good and an intermediate good. So, let us understand what are final goods. As you can see on the slide, final goods are all goods that are meant for either consumption by consumers or investment by the firms. So, we know that these are those products which would be enjoyed by you all hmm. sitting at home. <laughs> Say for example, any kind of uh, biscuits that you eat in the yes. morning or maybe uh, you know in the afternoon you suddenly feel like uh, very thirsty and you want to order some kind of uh, you know not just soft drink but <laughs> along with that a pizza. So, all that would be final good because it is for final consumption by the consumers yeah. but only consumers do not consume final goods. We see there are other people also who consume final goods. These are called producers, the firms. They also buy final goods. How? So, if there is a factory who is like having a good plant and equipment, a machinery or maybe a desktop for running the IT in the uh, organization, all that would be for final investment which would mean that you are using that product again and again over a period of time and that would also be called a final good. So, I will give you an example of say a refrigerator. So, if you have refrigerator at home, that is a final good because you are a consumer and it is meant for final consumption. However, if the same refrigerator product is bought by an organization to be mm. put in a pantry for their employees, product is the same but it is not used by the consumer, it yeah. is used by the producer. Yeah. So, it depends actually on the usage of the product whether it is final or intermediate mm. that makes it final. However, we all need to understand what is then intermediate goods mm. and why these intermediate goods are not counted for in the calculation of GDP because the three sectors primary, secondary and tertiary sectors are contributing towards the GDP but the intermediate goods which are being produced in through these sectors they are not even counted for in the GDP. So, what exactly are intermediate goods? Intermediate goods as you can see on the slide all goods which are used as raw materials for further production of other goods or for resale in the same year. All these are intermediate goods. So, same products like I said refrigerator can be a final good 
in two scenarios from the consumer's perspective and from the producer's perspective. However, you would not imagine the same refrigerator can also be an intermediate good Yes, because it might be just bought by a dealer for the purpose of resale in the same year. Mm. So it is not the good that becomes final or intermediate on its own. It is actually the usage that would determine whether the product is final or intermediate. Absolutely. But the catch here is intermediate goods are not included in the estimation of GDP because they have not yet reached its final state. Mm. So for that we need to understand the notion of problem of double counting. Yeah. I will show you this on the screen as to what is the problem of double counting why exactly intermediate goods are not included in GDP and you can easily relate with an example because I am talking about yummy chocolate factory. So here the final good that is there in my example is chocolate. So all the viewers would love eating chocolates and there are so many raw materials that are required and you can guess easily where would these raw materials be produced in the primary sector yes. and where would this chocolate be sold Again, it will be manufactured by the secondary sector mm. and with the help of the supporting services of tertiary sector, we can actually convert all these raw materials of milk, cocoa and sugar into chocolate ultimately. So let us understand what exactly is the problem of double counting. If you observe the diagram here, milk, cocoa and sugar is total input valued at rupees 50 moment it is sent to the factories to be processed into a chocolate now the value of the chocolate which is sold to the final end consumer is rupees 100 mm. but the raw materials were only that of rupees 50 so this 50 rupees has been added over here to the value of the chocolate why because the entire stages of production have happened and the factory itself is adding value to the raw materials and by converting these raw materials into chocolate so based on that we need to understand intermediate goods are milk, cocoa and sugar and the final good is chocolate. If I include both intermediate goods and final goods then it will lead to the problem of double counting. Mm. So what should we do in GDP? So if I come back to the definition of GDP, GDP is nothing but the value of final goods and services. Now you understood yes, how I, only final goods and services are included? Absolutely and here also we support the statement that a good that is final for one entity becomes intermediate for another. So that is why we are only taking the final into account because if we count it doubly or triply of course it will add to the problem of double counting. <coughs> now ma'am um, you know we are left with very little time so I just want to ask a very quick question that is there any data to support the trend in um, you know sectors contribution to GDP? Yes, absolutely. So let us quickly figure out what kind of data is available with us as per your grade 10 curriculum. First is GDP by primary, secondary and tertiary sectors. We can see clearly in this chart that tertiary sector has emerged as the largest producing sector in India replacing the primary sector. From 1973 to 2013, we can see the green color that, they, that is there on the screen is indicating a big jump in tertiary sector. Mm. However, if you see it in percentage terms, there is a bigger jump that you can see in the tertiary sector in relative terms as well. So the green color that you see on the screen has increased, but the blue color which is indicating the primary sector has reduced. Right. However, if we see the employment, this is a remarkable fact about India. While there has been a change in the share of the three sectors in the GDP, but the similar shift has not taken place in employment. Yeah. Imagine that your dominant sector in terms of occupation is primary sector yes. only. Over the time period, it has fallen from 71% to 44%. But the kind of contribution of the tertiary sector that has been seen in our country that has increased tremendously but the employment has not increased tremendously, right? So that is the beauty of understanding the three sectors and understanding as to if we know the three sectors deeply then we will understand that the government has to now find ways to find solutions to the problems which are existing in the primary sector that is making it low productive and then 
move towards the path of growth of the economy. Yes, and in addition to that, that is why you you know hear more these things uh, in today's scenario that let's you know increase the manufacturing, let's increase uh, the secondary sector's contribution to the GDP because in the long run it is definitely going to be of remarkable use. That you will understand when you will you know start uh, studying economics in your later stages. But for now, uh, this was a beautiful session where we learned about different sectors, their contribution to GDP. We also understood the concept of GDP and goods and services as well. For this entire conversation, I would like to thank my expert. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for your contribution to the session and for making us understand things in such a simplified and yet effective manner. Thank you once again. And now it's time for me to wrap up this session over here. But before I leave, here is a look at the live schedule of the day. Well, um, we have been running many educational programs for you. So let's watch on your screen what is up next for you. In a short while from now, uh, between 4 and 5 p.m., you're going to uh, witnessing or uh, having an online training session. And of course, uh, at 5 p.m., we will bring you our session Sahyo, followed by a session of NCSL NEPA, that is National Center for School Leadership, where we invite our guests and that session is particularly meant for school heads of the country. So, this is me, Harpreet Kaur, taking leave of you. But for more educational programs, do stay tuned in. Thank you. Namaskar.